And now, for something completely machinima. Tracy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice, this is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine, use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome to And Now for Something Completely Machinima, the podcast about machinima, virtual production and related technologies. I'm one of your hosts, Bill Rice, and I'm here with Damian Valentine and Tracy Harwood. Hello. Hello. I don't have to make something silly up about Ricky not being here this time because uh, Ricky is actually at a horror convention. Uh, his wife, Lisa, is uh, quite the accomplished author, actually, Lisa Morton. And uh, she recently uh, published a book, I want to say maybe about a year ago. Um, related to the horror genre, uh, basically a nonfiction uh, book. And it's been getting a lot of attention and actually is up for an award. So they're going to the uh, convention for that. So uh, very exciting for uh, the both of them. Um, I don't know if Lisa's a listener or not. Uh, she probably hears enough of Ricky without the show. So, but uh <laughs> If so, we we certainly uh, wish wish them the best and hope they're having a great time. Uh, this episode, we're talking about Ricky's pick because uh, basically the the way that the scheduling for the recording of this show went, uh, we kind of it wasn't till the last minute that we realized that Ricky wouldn't be able to be here. So he had already picked a film and didn't want us to just skip it, and so he basically uh, he he pre-recorded uh, a little bit of commentary to kind of set up his pick. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, hand things over to uh, to Ricky for a moment here and let him tell us about the film. Ricky, tell us about it. Hey, guys, I'm sorry I couldn't be there. I'm off on a uh, trip with my wife, Lisa Morton, to the Stoker Con convention in San Diego. She wrote a book called The Art of the Zombie Movie, and it's nominated for an award. So keep your fingers crossed uh, that we'll get it. In any event, I wanted you to know the uh, a little bit about the film that I chose. It's um, by a, a group called Lens Nation, and they use Star Citizen as their uh, tool for creating machinima. It's uh, part of the 60 Seconds of Horror contest. Uh, they, the, whoever entered the contest had to uh, only 60 seconds to be able to put together a horror film. Uh, they wrote an original poem. The poem is the text, and then it's uh, supported by uh, some shots inside of a ship that creates a sort of eerie, menacing quality. Um, I liked it a lot. I thought the editing was excellent. Um, there, it was a wonderful vocal performance by the guy. Uh, I kind of wish there was some sound design, even if it was rudimentary, to give a, a greater sense of place and uh, a, a sense of menace. I think it would have enhanced it a bit. Uh, they probably rushed it to put it together, although I'm just guessing. But uh, for a short film, I just thought it was excellent. And the poem is very much in the H.P. Lovecraft style. So it's eerie and odd, set in space. It could be the seed of something bigger, I think. So I really, really liked it. Lens Nation has 33 videos on their YouTube site with over a thousand subscribers. They mostly do sketch comedy. Um, although they do have some serious toned videos like this one. Uh, I particularly like uh, their sketch comedy on how to defrog your space vehicle window, <laughs> uh, which was very much in the red versus blue style of comedy. Uh, I liked it a lot. I hope you guys like it too. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. I'm um, finally... Um, I've grown fond of the Star Citizen community of filmmakers. I think there's a lot of creativity there, and I would urge any listener to go over there and see whether they, you could be part of the community and make some films there. 
Um, there's, we've reviewed some really good ones here, which I'm sure Tracy will uh, remind us of. So thank you guys. I'm really uh, sorry again I couldn't be there, but I will be with you next time, and I hope you like this film. Goodbye. Okay, excellent. Uh, you know, the the first time uh, I actually, I I watched Ricky's video about this, about his pick before I watched the pick or knew anything about it. And I was relieved when I watched the film because at, I misunderstood and I thought that, that the contest what? it was made for that they had 60 seconds to make the film. <laughs> and so I did not have very high expectations here of <laughs> even in Star Citizen, what can you get done in 60 seconds? But no, that it turns out that it's that that I'm stupid and it actually has to do with the duration of the film. So uh yeah, let's let's uh let's talk about that pick. Uh, Tracy, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, I love this actually. So, yeah, it's called "60 Seconds of of Horror Contest 2953," and it's by Lens Nation, and it was released last October. You know what's really weird this month actually is that all our picks are really dark, <laughs> and in some way or another, bizarrely, because we don't coordinate what we're going to pick. But bizarrely, they're all kind of related to loneliness in some way or another. Um, and this one is, is is just that. Let me tell you about Lens Nation to start with. Um, it's the professional name for Bobby Sandu's studio. He's an Australian creative producer. He's an illustrator and a machinima creator. And he is a TV show host, actor, director, screenplay and dialogue writer. Now, as an actor, he's best known for his Punjabi film work, which you can find listed on IMDb. Lens Nation does product photo shoots, um, things like headshots and drone photography and virtual tours and events and, and, and what have you. But also he's quite into VFX, animation and infographic effects on, on his videos. He's got another YouTube channel called 100 Gal Bat, um, which has considerably more followers than this channel that, that you'll see this video on. Um, and that one is focused on comedy videos, including including some machinimas, mainly, I think, in GTA uh, 5. Um, but these are with Punjabi celebrities, um, and it's clearly targeting an Indian audience. Um, and when you look through the portfolio of work that he's done, I think it would probably be fair to say that Bobby is actually quite a petrol head. Most of what he does is to do with uh, um, cars of one sort or another or trucks in the desert and what have you. Now clearly he's also an avid fan of Star Citizen and, and this film is made in Star Citizen. Um, in Star Citizen he's created artworks and drawn sketches from around the, the game world. He's also in the process of creating a set of armour, working with his son who's early teens um, uh, that they plan to release to the community. So um, really, as I understand it, just in a way to support the community. Now, I get the sense that the machinima side of things is actually a collaboration between Bobby and his son, um, which I think is a really cool idea because probably um, all the other aspects of his work takes him away from his family quite a lot. So I imagine that that's probably one of the driving forces for, for the kind mm -hmm. of work that we're seeing here. Anyway, with this particular film, I was I was particularly taken with one comment um that he'd made uh in the description and he said that uh it, it um he was inspired by how he feels whenever he goes for deliveries on outposts in the game he asks who lives there how long have they um have they been there uh what if they were cut off uh, and he also comments that that's me and these are his fears uh pretty much most of the time so there's a there's a, a context to this, which I think is is really quite interesting. Um, now, what you have here, I think, is quite a compelling and powerful film. It's a it's basically a, a poem that reflects on the torment of isolation. Now, I was going to say loneliness, actually, but I'm not entirely sure 
that would be true in this because it's not about loneliness per se, but about the central character's imagination of what's in that isolated place with him, driving him insane by the fact that it's not interacting with him as a human might, but uh, might expect, but but playing with his psyche, making him feel insane, unsure of what's true and what's purely imagined, effectively um, driving him mad in the in the in the process. Um, and for example, you you hear a a fly buzzing, but you don't see a fly. Um, he's stabbing at someone, but there's no one there. Uh, and maybe it's just happening in his imagination anyway. And he's looking out of a window for something, but there's nothing really to see. And, and all of that sort of stuff is uh, is going on. Um, so I think it's a film about the fear of being isolated and left alone or deserted, or maybe also about losing faith. Uh, I think he kind of needs a bit of a Wilson to talk to, or maybe a Hal, perhaps. Um, <laughs> and I think that's interesting because in, in Seeky, um, spirituality is nurtured by solitude. However, the feeling of loneliness carries with it a certain stigma um, being uh, of being forsaken or abandoned. So I think what you've got um, through that is the, the sense of um, a pain uh, as a consequence of uh, the heightened intensity of solitude. Um, and I think that comes through quite strongly in this, really. So I, I think there's a spirituality that's being portrayed here. Um, now, the writing is really quite beautiful. It's, I, it's, it's, I could just only really describe it as poetic. Um, but of course, it's really quite literal, too. We've seen this kind of work um, done in Machinima before, perhaps a little less literally, um, but certainly portraying the sense of being driven mad by the virtual environment, the character finds himself in. I'm thinking, Phil, of that 917 that you did with Crad Productions, um, which also had that kind of sense of madness in it or psychosis. Um, and also, do you remember um, do you remember Ignis Solus by Lit Fuse Films? Oh, yeah. Uh, which was years and years. I mean, it's a 2000, 2007 film when I looked it up. Um, but that one was also about isolation or what it's like to be uh, in a game and there's nothing really much going on around so you're you're sort of searching around for for something and it's the the you know the the, the portrayal of the character's persona and how they're dealing with this kind of isolation now ricky's comments on this were really also about for me the the, the quality of the writing he thinks it's almost lovecraftian in its eeriness that that didn't really actually occur to me until he'd said that um, and I can really see what he means by that. Um, he also comments that he would have preferred more sound design. Now, I think the words actually take over as the sound design mostly. I mean, like I said, I did hear that that fly or I thought I did. Maybe it wasn't a fly. I'm, I'm not sure, therefore, that the, the lack of a sound design actually bothered me that much. And partly the reason for that was because I felt like the creator was playing with sound as in the lack of sound, as a device for the suggestion of madness. Sometimes mm. you hear it, sometimes mm. there's nothing That's there good. at all. Is he imagining his behaviour or, or is it really happening? And I I actually thought that was a particularly clever aspect of the, of the film. So, you know, all in all, I thought this was another really great pick by Ricky. <laughs> and it's just a shame that he's not here that we can kind of debate some of the the points in more detail, but yeah, those are my thoughts. I don't know what yours are. I, I, I this is easily my favorite of all the the lonely films this month, like hands down. It's just delightful. Um, it it's got a simplicity to it, but not annoyingly so. It doesn't feel like it feels like that if they had if they weren't under the pressure of a contest that this is still this is still a, an aim worth worth achieving you know that like the the approach here i don't think that the sound was omitted because of lack of ability um i don't that's just my hunch is that i, I it didn't occur to me that it was a deliberate device that's very insightful uh and it, it 
very real possibility. It's very plausible that that's what they did. But I just, I didn't feel like it needed it. Um, and yeah, I, I would, I would love to talk more with Ricky about that at some point of, of what, what, what made him think that it, that it was missing. Cause I didn't, I didn't, I noticed that it was absent, but it, it didn't, didn't seem like it left a void at all, not being there for me. Um, I love the way that, that things were portrayed visually. The whole vibe of this film reminded me of, uh, there's a 2009 film starring Sam Rockwell called Moon. Mm. It's a feature length film and he is on a, he's stationed on a moon base and is isolated and is uh, losing his mind and, and his imagination's getting the better of him. And, and uh, it's not the only film that's done that either. Uh, that's, that to me is one of the more effective ones. It's got a delicious soundtrack as well. Beautiful music. Um, and Sam is, is amazing in it. And this, this has that same type of vibe. There's another, there's another machinima pick that we, did but I I couldn't for the life of me remember what the name of it is, um, but I it was made in one of these sci-fi games. I don't know if it was Star Citizen or if it was something else, but there it was somebody alone on a ship, and I believe in that one. It was just near we were hearing narration of of the person's thoughts. Um, and this the, the thing is is this it's, you know the, what what isolation can do i mean this is this is not theoretical this is what isolation does to almost everybody there might be certain people that are wired just right to handle true hermit lifestyle but for most people it doesn't take much isolation at all to drive them a little nuts you know um even people who think eh, i wouldn't mind the quiet eh, i wouldn't mind not having anybody eh. Yeah, you would. Most people would. <laughs> it uh, it is maddening. Um, the spirituality side of it, again, I didn't I didn't get that off it, but I totally see it now that you mention it. Um, C.S. Lewis, um, famous uh, author, wrote a lot of stuff related to uh, Christianity and spirituality in general and stuff. Friends with J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, excellent writer. And a lot of his descriptions of hell have a lot more emphasis on that it's aloneness, uh, uh, solitude, more than any any you know fire and brimstone kind of vision. Uh, and I think that's a much more compelling and frankly much more terrifying uh, idea of hell than, you know, pitchforks and you know devils poking with pitchforks and barbecuing you or something i mean that 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 would probably be really awful but just uh yeah it's it's anyway yeah that that does uh come through i didn't get any lovecraft vibe off of it even after he said that yeah I, it was a... um i i and maybe it's just because my 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 conception of lovecraft might be just immature or or limited but i i tend to think of it in terms of you know yeah. cthulhu and and some very specific uh malevolent personalities involved in things and i didn't i didn't really feel like that was a necessary component of this that this really was mostly about uh the effect of solitude of, of extreme solitude um and i've i i can remember moments in games where it's a sign of real immersion in a game when you do start to empathize with NPCs like that, you know, where you start to think about what's their life. Um, there's, there's, there's many games where there's opportunities for that. Um, I'm sure Starfield is that way. I haven't played it yet. There's some, there's some NPCs that you run into in, in fallout where it's that way, where they're just so off on their own. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a couple of those hidden in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a it's a it's a theme that a lot of different uh, games consciously or not end up toying with. And uh, uh, so I, I I can see why this was appealing to Ricky that it, he likes any 
any machinima that's shining a light on a corner we're not really paying attention to directly is is always a that that's a winner for for Ricky. It's 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 uh, one of the things he loves most about machinima, and and I enjoy as well. So I I just loved it. It was I have no criticism of it at all. Honestly, it doesn't mean that it's perfect or that it's you know technically uh there's no technical wow moments in this really like everything about it you look at it, it's like i know how they did that but it's the choices that they made in making it and uh you know the the whole it's almost become a, become a horror cliche now but the the fast fast head movement thing it's so effective it's been yeah. done so much you would think that when you see it you just go ah that again but no it works yeah it it really works. It's it's a strange image that uh, that's been used in so many contexts, and uh, it's still effective. So, yeah, I, I really uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Again, it's my favorite pick of the month. Damien, what do you think? Um, well, you were just talking about you know other games, and what one of the things that came to mind was in the first Mass Effect game. You know, when you go on random planets and you're driving around, and you find those little huts with one person that used to live yeah. in there, and they're dead or missing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and you you kind of it leaves you wondering well what happened to them because you don't get answers to it so you'll just find it and they'll be there and the stuff the gears all abandoned and maybe there'll be a body and maybe there's nothing there at all there's no trace of them there's no log you, you just have no idea and this is the kind of thing that um probably did happen um so yeah, when i first watched it it reminded me of a meme that was i've seen uh not long ago and it's been going around for a while it says you're not afraid of being alone in the dark. You're afraid of not being alone in the dark. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Oh. Yeah. That's what came to mind when I was watching it. And then um, it kind of has that, that feel of space madness and isolation of what happens. And um, it kind yeah. of, yeah, when you, I need to explore more stars and to try and find out posts like this because I've had trouble getting it to run properly on my computer, so I haven't got very far with it. But it kind of makes me want to see if I can tweak the settings and get it into a playable state just to go out and see what else I can find, like these little remote outposts. And uh, I think it kind of this film kind of captures that what happens to those people um, that are living either by themselves or in very small communities. Excuse me, on um, isolated planets, far away from civilization. Why are they even there? Like this is a barren planet. It doesn't seem to be of any value of being there. Uh, so why is he there? Um, because you know, it's not like he's running a mining outpost, or there doesn't seem to be any kind of sensor array or anything like that. So what's the point of this base? Why is he there? Does he choose it, or is he assigned there? It kind of leaves your imagination to to run wild. And the other question it left me with was, what happens when someone visits this base and finds him? You know, they're dropping off supplies, or that he hasn't sent any check-in signals to say he's all right. And there's no reports if someone's come to investigate why he hasn't um, uh, sent any transmissions or anything. So at some point, someone's going to go, come to this base uh, and find him either in this state or worse or missing or dead um it, it, you, you don't get the answer to that in this in this film and i like that because you, you kind of imagining all these kind of possibilities of what happens later on um so i i like that as an sort of open-ended uh possibility there because you know is this person going to attack the visitor or are they going to be in such a state they're not even aware the visitors even arrived or you know it could be anything um so I, I like that, and I hope we don't get an answer. I don't want a sequel or anything like that. I I, I like this just a, a sample taste of someone living in space by themselves, driven mad by isolation. And, you know, that, that term space madness, which appears in sci-fi quite a bit. Um, uh, and this, this kind of captures it uh, very well. So, yeah, I was very excited for this film. I, I think it may be one of my favorite picks as well. Um so yeah, Ricky, that was a, an excellent choice. And uh, I think I need to pay more attention to Star Citizen and Star Citizen Machinima. Yeah. Have we um, run our course on Star Citizen Machinima with the um, the copyright discussions that we've had on this one? 
Yeah, is they don't want people to use the actual main assets. Yeah, especially the celebrity actors that they've got for the single player game. Yeah. They don't want them being used. Maybe that's part of the contracts with those um, celebrities or something. It's kind of vague. So th there are some tight restrictions on Star Citizen Machinima, but obviously this one isn't affected by it. Um, so you know, we should keep an eye on it and see what happens. Yeah, that's a good point, because maybe what we'll see is more of these kinds of films of, of the of the NPC type stories rather than the main the main characters. Yeah. Yeah, what was that one that we saw that was really impressive? Adrift? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Which I think it ended up kind of getting a little bit torpedoed by those restrictions. Um it made yeah. it where it was tough for them to move on. So yeah, this is this is a nice way forward to uh kind of explore those uncharted regions, which I think probably fits really well with a game like Star Citizen. That's the whole, supposed to be part of the whole point, right? So, yeah, um, yeah great pick, Ricky. So what we're going to do for the rest of this month, because Ricky is actually going to be out for the entire month. So what we've decided to do, and we'll debut this in our, in our next episode, um, we have created a generative, generative AI um, version of Ricky. Um, based on basically pulling from the whole, you know, we've got how many oh, episodes gosh. have we done now? Over a hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty episodes, right? So basically, we've we've let it that be what it trains on, on all the stuff that that Ricky has said, and we're going to try it out, not as a permanent replacement, of course. There's no replacing Mr. Grove, but. It could be a nice solution for the podcast for vacation situations and things like that. So we're going to try it out, and uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about it to see see how that goes. So, in our next episode, we will uh, debut with with uh, AI Ricky, and I believe the next episode is we're we're going to be covering uh, a bunch of news and and such. So that'll be some good opportunity to to kind of run that through the paces. So thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can do so anywhere that you see this show. If there's an ability to comment, you can leave us a comment there. Or uh, you can email us, talk at completelymachinima.com. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think of the show. If you've got comments, if we talked about your film and uh, you know you, you want to let us know what you thought of what we said, that's great. Uh, and we will see you on behalf of myself, Phil and Tracy and Damien. We will see you in the next episode. Thank you. Bye. Bye.